Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Celestial Perch. Today I have a new video, this one will be a Civic Deep Dive, and we'll be looking at a Civic that kind of had a bad reputation for a while due to the job it gave you, but after the Unity rework and after a few other adjustments to the game, I think it deserves a little bit more respect than it gets these days, and we'll be taking a deeper dive into Aristocratic Elite. Now to start with every Civic Deep Dive, we'll go over each benefit that Aristocratic Elite will give us and list them out here. I'll show you all of the benefits, all of the uh, downsides, the exact kind of costs and everything. And then as we're going along with each benefit, I'll kind of give my opinion and give you, uh, give you an idea of how useful it might be in your gameplay, as well as what playstyles might want to pick this Civic. So without further ado, let's jump in to how Aristocratic Elite plays and what benefits it gives us. Now to start, our capital buildings replace some politician jobs with nobles. Now as of the Unity update in Stellaris, nobles and all other replacement jobs will also produce you Unity, as opposed to the old noble job, which did not. So now we get the same amount of Unity as a politician, the same amount of amenities as a politician it's just we also get two stability on top of that now two stability might not seem like a whole lot at the start comparing it to something like police state or idealistic foundation those will all also give you more unity than aristocratic elite at the start but there are some hidden bonuses to aristocratic elite and we'll get into those when we get into the noble estates building but for now, just looking at the raw noble job, Aristocratic Elite has a leg up on other empires, comparatively, who just have two politicians. You will, at the start of the game, have a politician and one noble. Now, keep in mind for the rest of the video that each point of stability over 50 will add 0.6 resources from jobs, 0.6 trade value, and 0.4 immigration pull. So you'll get a total from your nobles 1.2% resources from jobs, 1.2% trade value, and 0.8% immigration pull. So, not bad overall. Take note that you also have to upgrade your ship shelter into a planetary administration to actually receive the benefit of a noble. So, it does take a bit of time, you have to jump through some hoops to get the aristocratic elite benefits, but once you get there, it can be quite powerful. Moving on, we can look at the noble estates building itself and see how that plays out. Now, looking at the Noble Estates building, we can see that it will take 480 days to complete, will require 400 minerals up front, and has an energy upkeep of 2. The benefit is that it will provide one housing and one noble job. At first glance, it doesn't seem like a whole lot comparing it to some other buildings, and only giving you one job for a building might not seem very impressive, but once we get into the actual benefits, I might be able to change your mind. For the noble position, as we've shown before, it will give us some stability, it will give us some unity, and some amenities. Now the real benefit to aristocratic elite isn't so much that we get two stability from the job, that's kind of just a small benefit on top of just the regular politician job. It's that we have a building that can actually create us a ruler class strata job. So, for example, on a planet where we've recently captured and taken it over, we might have low stability. Now, as shown here, I was playing a game for testing, and when I took it over, the stability was already rather high, as it was kind of in the mid to late game. But still, even after building a Noble Estates and setting it up, we can see that our stability has increased by a lot more than the initial 2 stability that the Noble job would give us. This is due to the fact that the aristocratic elite nobles are of the ruler strata, and depending on your living standards, the ruler strata will have a lot more political power. And political power factors into your overall approval rating. So the approval rating in Stellaris, it's determined by the average happiness of each stratum weighed by the political power. So approval ratings range from 0 to 100%, uh, with a base level of 50 and each point above 50 will add 0.6 stability up to 30 and each point below 50 will add minus one stability up to negative 50 at zero percent and 100 percent approval rating respectively but the important thing to keep in mind is that 
the average happiness is weighted by political power. So if we have the ability to add a pop with given living standards like gratified economy, we can get a 900% political power bonus. And that means that our rulers will have 10 political power, our specialists will have two, and our worker class will have 0.75. So although it may not seem like a lot at first, the actual benefit of the noble estates is quite a bit more, as adding a whole extra ruler job will be a lot more stability overall compared to just the regular two that you see from the job itself. So this kind of lends itself to a specific strategy where in the early game, early to mid game, aristocratic elite has a benefit when taking over other planets, you can really quickly stabilize stability. And then also in the late game, you can throw some of these aristocratic elite noble estates buildings on your planets and it will increase the stability a lot more than an amenity job would. And in doing so, you will be able to produce a lot more on those planets with lots of pops, uh, be it a relic world, a eco monopolis, or a ring world. Any of those worlds can benefit a lot from higher stability, as the percent resources from jobs matter a lot more in the late game. So aristocratic elite, at least the noble estates building that it gives you, has a lot of potential and can be flexible depending on your playstyle, but I think it, generally speaking, requires you to be playing a living standard that will give uh, your ruler's strata jobs a lot of political power, so either something like academic privilege or stratified economy both work. Now moving on to the noble chateau's holding, uh, this is kind of where the civic falls flat. Uh, the noble chateau is very bad. Uh, it's going to give the vassal that you're building it on minus 15 amenities, and it will only give you plus two stability for an entire holding. Not only does it hurt your vassal and can reduce their stability and cause them to produce less, meaning you might get fewer taxes, it just also doesn't give you very much. The two stability when you're building a holding, at that point, you're probably looking to get some other holdings placed on that will give you more resources uh, that will just give you more resources overall and the noble chateau doesn't really do that so there isn't too much to say here other than it's kind of irrelevant but it does have some roleplay potential oh and i can't forget that it also reduces the loyalty by one which you can offset this through other means it's just not something that you're really trying to do you want to try to min max the loyalty as much as possible and get as much uh output as you can from your vassals so just having to work around that for a very 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 minor benefit on your capital just overall isn't worth it and i i would say to avoid the noble chateaus at all costs now the last benefit to look at is the governor level cap being increased by one this is a pretty minor and almost irrelevant bonus as there are plenty of other ways to increase just the general ruler or leader level cap uh, above one so a, a leader starts at level one and base can increase to level five. It can increase up to a maximum of level 10. So you can stack as many bonuses up to level 10 and that's the max level a leader can get. So this will allow our governors to get from level five to level six. Uh, the only issue with this is that if you look at the actual XP required to get to level five, just in general, it's 2,750 XP total. Now, a governor gains 5 XP per month while governing. So if you divide that by 5, you get 550 months total, or 45 years of governance before they even hit level 5. And then just to get to level 6 after they are level 5, it will take 350 months, or an additional 29 years. So although it's not difficult to keep your leaders alive that long, if you're able to pick up techs, and just go through the tech tree efficiently, you should pick up enough bonuses as well as some bonuses within the traditions that your leader shouldn't die. It's just that by the time you're getting to the point, if you have no other bonuses to leader experience gain, that you would benefit from the governor level cap being increased. Likewise, through techs and traditions, your level cap will have been increased to the point where this won't really matter. So it is thematic and does make sense, but I wish it was just a little bit better. Maybe if it gave governors some increased experience 
or maybe started them at a higher level or maybe increased the benefits you received from governors ever so slightly could give aristocratic elite another little push into a higher tier but those are all the benefits of aristocratic elite and now we can just kind of talk about it as a whole in single player and multiplayer and wrap up the video so looking at aristocratic elite overall it's definitely a powerful civic in the right hands and within the right playstyle can really help you stabilize planets. Uh, compared to its competitors, stuff like Police State, Idealistic Foundation, as well as Byzantine Bureaucracy, uh, it definitely holds up to those depending on the situation you're in. It does require a bit of extra effort, of course. Uh, the other civics don't require you to build a building, but this one also nets you an extra ruler job. So it does have its niche, I would say, and depending on your playstyle, it can really fill a good role. It also has some great roleplay potential. Can't forget about that. It changes your playstyle quite a bit, and the addition of the holding can work really well with roleplay. But when you're looking at it from a single player perspective, it plays more into an aggressive playstyle, uh, as well as something you could pick up for your third civic to build these on larger planets with lots of pops to take advantage of the extra stability in more of the mid to late game. In multiplayer, I'm not entirely sure it might, I mean, it's obviously not going to be a meta pick, but there is potential to use Aristocratic Elite. It could be interesting in some kind of a way where you could take over someone's planet, stabilize it really quickly, and use that to kind of help yourself snowball a bit more than you would be able to with a different Civic. But overall, I would say Aristocratic Elite kind of falls into a, a B tier, maybe like B, B plus, somewhere around that. Probably just a solid B though, in my mind, along with all of the other kind of stability civics. But thank you for listening, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We've already hit, I think like around 240 subscribers, which is pretty cool. Uh, my ori original goal was to get to 50, so <laughs> done slightly better than that. But thank you guys, and uh, have a blessed day.